Hi everyone. As a quick little follow-up to my last video where we were looking at the Kai Leeds KM201 multimeter, I thought I would take a look at the Anning AN101. So you might remember from last time that I liked the form factor of this Kai Leeds for climbing around trying to get stuff done at home, um, but I wasn't real impressed with the meter itself. So I was thinking um, I've seen some pictures online. The AN101 has been around for quite a while, I think over a decade. Um, and some teardown photos uh, from back in the day do show it having both a PTC and a MOV for input protection. So that's kind of the, the standard that you would expect on a multimeter that the Kaiweeds was lacking. So I thought let's get our hands on one of these and see if they're still making it that way because it's not entirely clear the model has clearly changed they used to do micro amps and they now instead do capacitance uh, so this multimeter does not measure micro amps which might be a problem if you're doing fine electronics work um, or certain uh, furnace related work um, but capacitance was one of the things that I was lamenting was missing on the Kaiweeds. So I thought, let's take a look and see if they're still making it with decent input protection because this multimeter runs about $15 in the United States on eBay and the Kaiweeds that I was looking at last time, and it was about 20 bucks last time, they seem to have marked it down to about $15 now. So maybe they've realized it's not quite a $20 product. Um, but these two are priced very similarly in terms of, of what you can get in the United States. Um, and obviously if you order this straight from China, it's, it's much cheaper than $15. So let's open this up um, and see what we have. I've never opened this before. Um, so there's that capacitance mode and we have a, a traditional rotary switch rather than that push button which is really kind of annoying on the, the so-called smart meters. If you really never need to change modes yourself, if you're always in that um, volts, ohms, continuity mode, that's fine. And the Kaiweeds doesn't really have that many settings, but on the other Kaiweeds smart meter that I showed, it, it really requires an annoying amount of button pushing in order to get to, say, the capacitance mode when I can just turn the dial. And of course, the dial doesn't feel that great. It doesn't engage as well as a fluke voltimeter, but this is a cheap $15 meter and you can feel it locking into place. So I, I really can't complain too much about it. And this form factor is really much more traditionally what you see in pocket multimeters, a plastic case that holds the little meter and the probes so you can shove the whole thing in your pocket without damaging anything. You don't see this form factor as often as you used to, um, but whereas this one leaves the wires exposed, this is the classic pocket meter. So we have, uh, the probes are, are tiny, um, actually even tinier than the Kaiweeds probes that I was saying last time were smaller than I'm used to, and the finger guards are practically non-existent on this Anning meter, so it's not really ideal for poking around high voltage because there's not a lot to keep you from accidentally touching it with your fingers. You don't want that. And the probes, the wires are even thinner than the Kaiweeds, which is again thinner than uh, most standard multimeter probes. But um, without a, an amp setting, these probes don't really carry much current. You just have a milliamp setting. So time will tell, I guess, how, how long it lasts. Um, these probes are not shrouded. That's another thing that's really not great if you're probing around higher voltages and the probe happens to pull out, the connector happens to pull out from the meter, then you've got exposed metal at those higher voltages. 
which is again really not great. Although I will say the grip is is quite good. That's a that's a strong grip on there. And the connector is definitely smaller than the standard four millimeter banana jack. So you probably are not going to have a lot of luck if you're trying to use it in uh, a standard multimeter, which also means it's going to be very hard to find replacement probes if you manage to damage this set. But the meter is extremely cheap, so maybe that's a worthwhile trade-off. So I got this straight from China and the battery was not included, but let's get this open. It runs on a single CR2032, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that screw is not captive, so it's easy to lose. Um, although it does... no. There's no metal insert there. That's just plastic. All right, let's see. Let's let's get a battery in here and see what we can do. Oh, it turned on because I had it. I hear something rattling around inside. I think so I'm not sure what that is. We'll have to take a look when we get it open. Hopefully it's just a piece of plastic that came loose. So there are two screws on either side of the battery compartment. The back just popped off quite easily. And that's not the same teardown image I've seen in other places. So we do have a PTC here. That's good. I'm not seeing a mauve though. That's a little disappointing, but um, not unusual for these these cheaper meters. So. The, the presence of a PTC beats that Kaiweets that we were just looking at. Um, but I don't believe we have a mauve. Now, what is this? Is this a fuse? And there's not a whole lot going on in here uh, beyond that input protection. Um, it would be interesting to know what integrated circuit they've got under this blob. It's got 11 connectors, 11 pads on each side, uh, so that might narrow it down. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can find anything online to narrow it down, um, and if you have any ideas, leave a comment below. Whatever chip it is, it's clearly doing all of the readings and the display, so that integrated circuit can do capacitance. Unlike the, the classical ICL 7106. Um, but there's not a lot of components in here. That, of course, is the buzzer. That, of course, is the buzzer. I'm not... And I think this is the debris that was rattling around inside making that sound. That looks like it's conductive, so that's not great. That could have come into contact with something and made sparks fly if I had been probing higher voltage at the time. So I'm glad I got that open. I suppose you could always just solder in new connectors on these two points if you really wanted to replace your probes. 
Um, it looks like some diodes were omitted. I hope that's not anything important. A bunch of pads over here that are that are being omitted also. Um, not a whole lot going on in here. And so I wouldn't really trust this to be a CAT3 device, but for CAT2 work, you could do worse. And if you've watched the various EEV blog Dave Jones videos, you know that with these self-tappers, you want to screw them backwards until you get a little bit of a click from it falling into uh, the threads so that you don't tear up the plastic when you're reinstalling them. And of course, it's just a matter of time before the one on the battery compartment fails. Now you could probably screw in a bigger self-tapping screw at that point. Alright, so now that there's nothing rattling around posing a safety hazard, let's see how well it works. The neat little trick with this case is it has a little kickstand that folds out. I'm not sure exactly if I'm using it the way they intended, but I think that'll work. Alright, so let's see, I've got this set to 15 volts. 14 point, not 15. Yeah, right on the money, I think. There's three and a half volts, that looks good. And this power supply may not be perfectly accurate to the last digit, um, but that's good enough. And there's a capacitor in this power supply, so that's why you see both of these counting down. It's not necessarily the meter being that slow. 0.524. Let me, let me just see real quick if 0.524 is really accurate. Because I don't I don't know if that's the meter or the power supply that's slightly off. Yeah, 0.523 on the fluke. So uh, this meter seems to be spot on for DC voltage. And I hesitate a little bit to shove this into AC voltage, but it's got better input protection than that Kai Wheats from last time. It's just these cheaper probes. 122.3, that sounds right on the money. And for when you don't need to make an exact voltage reading, we've got non-contact voltage detection. It looks like it also shows two different levels. One if you're close. Oh, four different levels, depending on how close you are to the hot wire. The beeping is not terribly loud, um, which might be a problem in a noisy environment, but of course you can look at the display and those dashes show you it. Um, it also beeps every time you change setting, which sometimes I find annoying, but at least this one is not very loud. And this one measures frequency. You don't always get that on the cheap meters. So let's see with that same 60 hertz AC. Sixty hertz.
And of course, one of the main selling points is that this one actually does capacitance. So let's see how it does on this 47 microfarad capacitor. Fifty point six. And on the fluke, fifty point eight. Beautiful. And here's one of those tiny little ceramic capacitors that my fluke can't even measure because it's. This particular fluke is intended for electrical work, so not for tiny little capacitances. So I get zero nanofarads on the fluke. And let's see, bearing in mind that this is showing me seven nanofarads even with nothing connected. Oh, 0.007 nanofarads. So I get about 20, 19, 18 picofarads. So it recognizes that there's definitely a capacitance here, which is something that I couldn't test on my fluke. And that's kind of nice. Picofarad re resolution. Oh, and if you, if you hold down the select button, it does do a relative measurement. So there is a way to zero it out. That's good to know. No backlight as far as I can tell, but on the whole, I think I feel slightly better about this meter than I did about the Kaiweeds, which didn't have input protection that seemed very impressive. They both claim 300 volts cat three and 600 volts cat two. In both cases, I would stay away from cat three work, stay out of your breaker box with these cheap little meters, but for CAT2 work, I think I would sooner trust this one, and you get capacitance, so, you know, if you need a cheap little meter, if you really only have 15 bucks or less to spend on a multimeter for uh, knocking around the house and trying to repair stuff, I think this one has to be the winner. Now, of course, the innards could change at any time. As I said, there was a previous version that instead of capacitance, it had micro amps. So it's kind of annoying that this is sold under the AN101 name, um, although that doesn't seem to be written on here anywhere because there have been at least two different versions of the AN101 floating around. They could have called it a 102 or a 101A. Now that I think about it, I suppose this kickstand folds around onto the back so you can keep the multimeter in the case. And then an advantage of keeping it in the case is that this plastic prevents the meter's uh, probe plugs from coming out and exposing the metal that I was talking about earlier. And of course, I keep saying that I don't really use this channel for product reviews, but I saw this and I thought, well, if the Kaiweets is not to my liking, let's find something that is. I think I have to declare this one to be the winner for dirt cheap around the house meters. In fact, I think I might have to give this the award for the cheapest meter that might actually be worth buying. Of course, if you're just doing fine electronics work at low voltage, low energy, where you don't care too much about input protection, you probably would prefer the AN8008, but for handy person sort of work around the house and for something that fits easily into your pocket, I think this one is the winner. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks.